Good morning, everybody. We are really excited to start off the show today with one family's very inspiring story. When Mark and Margaret Fairbanks were told that their three-year-old son, Harry, had autism, doctors told them their son would probably never go to college and that they should, quote, lower their expectations. Well, like many parents, they were heartbroken at first, but they refused to give up on their son. Mark and Margaret found a unique way to bridge the gap between Harry's world and their own world, and now they're on a mission to help other families to do the very same thing. Mark is here to tell us about the Islands of Brilliance program and a very special fundraiser as well that you can attend. Welcome to the Morning Blend. Thanks for having great me. To yeah, great to see you. Great to see you. I can't imagine, I, I'm not a parent, but I can't imagine hearing the words lower your expectations. Your child will never go to college. You heard he's not going to be ready for kindergarten mm -hmm. or first grade. Yep. All of these things being heard by experts. Mm -hmm. And as parents sitting there thinking, how am I going to defy this label that right. my child has been given? Yeah, you, you can imagine that you're going through a lot of fear and, and anxiety around the diagnosis and then there's this prognosis. And it really had the effect to motivate us. It kind of made me angry. That how can you actually make that you know, judgment about you know, our son who's only three years old and basically said, we'll you know, figure out what he's capable of doing. And from there, we just went on. And it was, we were lucky in that uh, we had different careers back then. So Margaret was an on-camera actress, and I worked in advertising. And she used her improv skills to figure out ways to communicate with him. She would talk to Thomas the Tank Engine trains and work with him that way. Mm -hmm. And then I started to see that he uh, picked up technology very quickly and was able to, he was interested in design software and things like that. So that's kind of where the idea for the program came, was out of our experience of how do we actually get Harry to communicate, how do we get him to learn. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk about the, the, the incredible project that you started that's now spreading really yeah. across the, the country. But first, I, I, in your TED talk, you mm -hmm. talked about how common mm -hmm. autism is. Mm -hmm. One in 68 kids, I think yeah. you said at the time you're talking, one in 42 boys. Yeah. You also called it the fastest growing developmental disability in mm -hmm. our country. What, what do you think is the key for parents not not maybe including the program quite yet to engaging with and communicating with a child who has autism yeah you know it's it's difficult because as parents I think your natural inclination is that you want your uh, son or daughter to be interested in a bunch of things and uh, kids on the autism spectrum generally have a very narrow area of interest that they want you call I mean, it a hyper fixation right in they fact. call it an area of affinity now mm -hmm. um, and you have to embrace that because that's your way in yeah. so if you can make uh, a lot of things uh, relate to their area of interest you have a better chance of connecting and you can use that as an actual uh, you know teaching conduit for them well and I think that's um, one of the keys of, of something you said and we should post we'll post your TED talk mm -hmm. I think on our Facebook page because we're referring to it a few times it's it's phenomenal you got to watch it but you say that the two things that are really tough to connect to a child um, on the spectrum is that they have a lack of focus and personal connection. Right. And I think that's even where as a bystander to someone who knows someone or uh, somebody in the community or someone in a classroom, it's hard to connect with those kids because that, that lack of eye contact, things like that oftentimes. Right. One of the things you said is, is parents especially try and bring them into our world. You, mm -hmm. you had arranged a softball game. Right. Just kind of give that antidote, I think, before we get into the Islands sure. of Brilliance, just because I think that's going to be really relatable to a lot of parents or kids. Yeah, I think one of the things that we notice is that um, the programming, if you will, out there for, for not only kids on the autism spectrum, but for disabilities are kind of these guardrail programs mm -hmm. for what we would refer to as neurotypical kids. So Harry was involved in a t-ball league and it was interesting because there are 30 kids out on the field and none of them are really interested in being there. And in my head, I thought, wouldn't it be great if, we, if there, were, there was something out there that was built around their strengths and interests? Mm -hmm. And that was kind of another you know, kernel of an idea that led to us forming the program. Yeah. Let's talk about Islands of Brilliance because mm -hmm. you get into the fa to, to creating these one-on-one -on -one experiences mm -hmm. with young people who have autism, with uh, someone who is creative. Yeah. And you talk about being creative. You know, th these are people who dress different sometimes, yeah. act different, think different. So they're yeah. the perfect connection for someone with autism and also teaching them some incredible skills. And I think a lot of parents are so critical of technology today yeah. and they think it's so awful. Mm -hmm. But this is a wonderful way uh, to connect with kids who have autism. Yeah, it's actually a level setter for them. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of them will pick, we call it rapid technology learning, and they're really good at that. You know, if you think about it, if you struggle with 
uh, picking up emotional cues. A software interface is very black and white. You know, mm -hmm. you, it's if this, then that type of thing. So naturally, students on the autism spectrum will pick up software quicker. So if you have a best friend who's interested in everything that you are, for an hour and a half a week, and you're gonna do something cool around that, then you get the buy-in, right? So our, you know, people come visit our workshops and say, I've never seen anything like this. Mm. These kids are you know, super focused and they're having fun. It's like, well, of course, we make it, a, you know, we build it around their interests. We give them the best friend to help them create stuff, and then all these wonderful things happen. I mean, it's like, if we meet and I start talking about myself, uh, but if I ask you what are your interests, you're gonna open up with me, and that's kind of the, the magic, the secret sauce of what we do in the program. I love it. So this is a, a program that you are continuing. You've done it in multiple states. Yeah. It's, it's starting to spread across the entire U.S. Yeah. And it's done um, right here in yeah. Milwaukee. Yeah, we're actually really focusing more now on Milwaukee because it's growing so fast that we have to keep up. We have a waiting list for, mm -hmm. for students right now. How can and, you uh, expand it? Is it with dollars? Is it with more volunteers? Uh, uh, both. Uh, you know, one of the things is in order to increase capacity, we have to have more volunteers. So next year, we're going to be, you know, focusing on that, reaching out to, let's say, corporate departments to get more volunteers in that way. We, we still, we always, fundraising is always an ongoing, everyday thing. Yeah. Um, but our goal really is, it's interesting because the students are leading us to where we need to go. We're seeing where their strengths are. So we started out with design. We've added coding now. We're going to be adding 3D modeling. Uh, and within two years, we'd like to have an actual two-year digital academy for juniors and seniors so that they are able to spend time there. Because all of this is about, you know, we talked about the rate of, of prevalence. The other thing is there's a, it's estimated a 90% underemployment, unemployment rate mm -hmm. for adults on the spectrum. And that's what we're trying to change, especially yeah. right here in Milwaukee. And we feel that uh, there's actually a, a, a nexus of autism excellence happening in Milwaukee, not just us, but uh, First Stage runs Next Steps. There mm -hmm. are all these wonderful programs here in Milwaukee, and if you have a child on the spectrum, this is a really good community to be in. Well, you yeah. have a child on the spectrum mm -hmm. who is now in college, yeah, and is. from what we understand, is on the dean's list with a yep. 3.866 something GPA. Yes. Yeah. He's doing yeah. well, yeah. and you must be so proud and so, so grateful that the, the doctors in this case were we're wow, wrong. Yeah. Um, you could have higher expectations than you hope for. You've mm -hmm. got this incredible event, Colors and Chords. Mm -hmm. It's a fundraiser for Islands of Brilliance. It's mm -hmm. happening November 10th at 6 p.m. Turner yep. Hall. Yeah. And this is an opportunity for people to support your program, find yep. out more about it, yeah. and have a good time. And it's fun. And it's fun. So yeah. we match uh, four local bands on stage with four artists, and the artists live paint on stage the music. So it's a half hour. So house. cool. Yeah. And we're really excited because this year, one of our students is going to be on stage. So 11-year-old Trinity Jackson is going to be the first uh, set uh, with Jay Anderson, who's a local you know, phenom here. And yeah. uh, they're going to be starting off the evening. It's Incredible. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. And it's spreading. It's in Duluth. It's in Minneapolis. Yeah. I know you got workshops in yeah. Chicago. Yeah. It's great that this incredible project, Islands of Brilliance, you have to find out more. We'll post a TED Talk. Mm -hmm. Like Tiffany just said, Colors and Chords, the fundraiser is happening Friday, November 10th at 6 p.m. Turner Hall. You can find out more by going to islandsofbrilliance.org. Um, and it's wonderful because tickets are only, what, $30 yeah. a piece. Yeah. And we're giving away to right now, mm -hmm. which is fantastic, to caller number seven. You'll win a pair of tickets to Colors and Chords for Islands of Brilliance. So call us now at 414-799-4444. Great to meet you in yeah, person. Yeah, thanks for being yeah. here. Thank yeah. you so much. Thanks for having